Yeah, what's going on guys? Making a little video today, uh, doing a tour around the XJ470 quad uh, that I have here. I picked this up from a guy on RC Groups. So I'm gonna be talking about what I think about this frame, my experiences so far, and uh, some of the negatives and positives. So I'll start off with the positives, of course. I'll save the negatives for later. And uh, so the, the frame itself is pretty strong. I really like how you can just, you know, take out these red thumb screws and this thing will just fold right down uh, to a really small, compact form factor. Um, it's easy to transport, doesn't take up that much space. And um, if you got like a carrying case, you know, you can fit it in there much easier compared to some other frames. The other frame that I was considering getting before this one was the S500. So it kind of kind of looks like the F450 flame wheel, but it's a little bigger. And it's actually, here, here's my other frame right here. And then the S500 actually has a dihedral arm. So the arms kind of sweep upward a little bit. And, uh, and that's supposed to make for, you know, a little bit more stable flight, um, especially when you're, when you're descending, you're supposed to get a, you know, a little bit uh, more stable descent. Uh, the quad doesn't, you know, shake around so much when you're descending. Um, other than that, the frame is, um, a hundred grams, uh, heavier than my other frame, but it's not too big of a deal. Um, kind of made up with that for that 100 grams by going with different motors. So taking a look at the front here, uh, this frame actually comes with several different options for cameras and gimbals. And this is how I have my gimbal mounted on right here. And so I just took off the, uh, the upper metal plate and I stuck these little balls right into the carbon fiber pieces that came with the frame. And that seems to work pretty well. So the motors I'm running on here right now are Sunny Sky X2212. These are the 980 kVs, and um, they're pretty damn well balanced. I can't really complain about these at all. Um, pretty efficient compared to some other motors, and I'm running these 10 by 3.8 props. And you can also notice some sort of discoloration on these props. I don't really know what that's about, but these are the uh, carbon mixed props from Hobby King. Um, kind of looks like some like a camouflage pattern or something. I don't know. I don't know what that's about, but that's how they came. And not all of the props were like that too. So that was kind of weird. So powering these motors, I have uh, the wires running through this arm and they go right to this Quantum Q-Brain 4-in-1 ESC. This is the 25 amp by 4 ESC right inside there. And the wires are pretty long, so they made it nice and easy to run straight through these carbon fiber tubes. So taking this top plate off here, I have uh, the D8R2 Plus receiver and this little wire right here connected is the, uh, the telemetry wire and that reads the battery voltage. So I have the FR Sky uh, telemetry screen on my 9XR transmitter and uh, I just have it set up to beep when it gets to 10.6 volts and um, that's when I know it's time to land. And for the flight controller right now, I have this NASA light, uh, just like my other frame. And with the GPS, of course, you know, I had to reconfigure some of the settings, the NASA assistant software, um, because I had to reposition where the GPS was in relation to the center of gravity. And when you don't do that correctly, if you have the incorrect numbers in there, then, you know, you could experience like a toilet bowl effect with your quad when it's hovering in the air. For the video transmitter, I have a TS351 right here, and that's with a, a cloverleaf antenna connected to that. And on the receiver end, I have a skew planner. So the cloverleaf has three lobes, and the skew planner has four lobes. And I did a test in another video where I had this antenna pointed downward. So most of my flights, the antenna was actually pointed upward like this. And uh, so I did a test pointing it downward and that actually seemed to provide a little bit better video transmission, uh, especially when flying directly overhead and, um, and off in the distance too. But if you want really uh, longer range, then there are many other options to go with other than this. Uh, in particular, I would recommend something like a helical antenna um, on your video receiver end. 
So I'm still using the same gimbal and gimbal controller as my last quad. And this is the uh, Good Luck Buy style gimbal. And I just removed the upper metal plate that was on this gimbal. And I stuck it right onto these, uh, these carbon fiber uh, plates that came with the frame. This frame actually comes with several different options for mounting cameras and gimbals. Uh, it comes with these two tubes that you can mount right here. Uh, if you have a gimbal that's you know compatible with that type of mounting and um, if you watch my previous video um, that i'm actually encoding right now on my laptop you may have noticed that uh, there is there is some vibration the camera is slightly vibrating like that and um, i believe what's happening is wind is hitting this and it's causing the gimbal to kind of lose position in the air and so I'm going to have to adjust the power settings and possibly even the P and the D settings or maybe even all three um, until I get this thing just right. So, so this thing can combat the, uh, the force of the wind a little better when I'm, when I'm flying at a decent speed. So now on to the negatives of this frame. Yes, there are some negatives. So when I received this frame in the box, it came already built. Um, this does take a little bit of time to build this. There's a lot of parts, a lot of screws. Um, but there's one thing that I noticed right away. And that was that uh, there was a screw just kind of sitting there in the bottom of the box. And I found out where the screw went and it was um, basically right here. Or one of these other arms. And so what happens is, if you have any kind of vibration at all, um, these, these uh, arms will... It's vibrating now because I don't have this thing screwed in all the way. But, um, you know, these screws can vibrate out and you can lose them. Now, the arms are not going to just fall off in the middle of the air. But what I did was I got some green thread locker and I put them on all those screws on the top and the bottom. So there's four on top, four on the bottom. And that should make sure those screws pretty much never come out again. So the green one is is like the weakest of all the thread lockers and then you have the blue which is a little stronger and then the red which is well pretty much you're never going to get it out if you use red so you definitely don't want to use that another negative thing about this frame that people complain about um, not so often as some other things but the landing gear right here 10 millimeter carbon fiber tubes these can break if you land too hard uh, now you can easily buy more carbon fiber tubes like this so if you do break this, then you know you can easily buy new ones, but just something to be aware of. And, uh, and of course, when I got this frame, it had this white plastic plate on top here that was cracked. And a lot of people crack these. They just kind of throw them away. And um, several people have made their own little plate that goes on here. Some people have used wood. Uh, I've seen aluminum. I've seen people use uh, carbon fiber plate they just kind of cut it to you know roughly this shape and they just mount it back on there uh well basically what i did was i got in touch with another guy on rc groups and he was getting rid of his plastic plate and that's what i have here so i'm probably going to be putting that on there i'll maybe even wrap this in carbon fiber vinyl i don't know may, might be might look a little more cool or something i don't know other negatives with this frame are that uh, there are no replacement parts now, this frame is available on Hobby King, and I know that in their Hobby King daily video, they did mention that they were gonna supply uh, replacement parts for this, but that's just not the case. This frame has been out for a long time, and there are no replacement parts. So, um, you know, just something else to consider, I guess. The frame itself is like 130 bucks, so if you totally destroy this thing, you may be kind of dead in the water. Unless you can find somebody that's parting out their frame, uh, you may just have to buy a new one or get a whole different frame. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, let me know uh, in the comments below. I'll try to answer any questions you have. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.